Uh, I think we uh, think it's about a time. Uh, I would uh, probably just like get started and kick up the uh, discussion. So uh, like for everyone who just entered uh, this session, uh, this will be the first uh, session uh, in, in the postal track. And uh, and uh, we have known uh, from Stream Native that uh, he would give a presentation around a uh, postal function and uh, function mesh. And uh, we'll welcome them. And I'll just give the whole uh, stage to Neng. Okay, uh, thank you, Sijie. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, uh, in this talk, uh, we are going to talk about uh, postal functions and some extensions we are uh, at Stream. Uh, stream native trying to uh, design and implement uh, called uh, function mesh. Um, so, uh, so currently uh, the landscape of data processing with us Apache Pulsar is like you can integrate with uh, some interactive uh, query engines like Presto. Uh, we can integrate with uh, stream and the batch processing engines like Flink, Spark, and Hive, and also. A very special unit is we developed within Pulsar itself. It's called a uh, function uh, processing. Um, so for Pulsar functions, functions are lightweight computer processes that uh, consumes message from uh, multiple parts, one or multiple Pulsar topics, and uh, handling those uh, read message with the uh, user logic, user supplied uh, logic. And then, like output, dump those uh, results into another Pulsar topic. Uh, it's to give you a, a very intuitive, like uh, intuition. It's like uh, in this uh, in this graph, we see that uh, one Pulsar function is reading uh, input messages from uh, three topics, and then, like after processing those messages with the user-defined logic inside this unit, uh, we can output the messages to the uh, to the topic four. And in the meantime, it's possible like we, uh, the parser functions uh, write out some log messages into another uh, help topic uh, called log topic. So, so um, that's probably uh, the very uh, intuitive like introduction for parser functions. And uh, some people uh, or many people, they have uh, questions around what parser functions is and what is not. Uh, first, uh, the what Pulsar functions is not uh, it's not a full power streaming uh, processing engines uh, like say Apache Flink, Apache Storm, or Heron, and also it's not a new like computation abstraction layer like um, uh, like Bean. You have to learn a lot of uh, different uh, new like concepts of computation and then compose a job. What Pulsar function really is it's it's a Lambda style functions. That is specifically designed to integrate with Pulsar. Uh, so, uh, the use cases for Pulsar functions would be like simple ETL jobs. You can extract uh, data and uh, transform and then load data, your data uh, into some uh, destinations. And also, what you can do with Pulsar functions is a real time aggregation, like say, count how many people are accessing your website and uh, what's the uh, request number of some of your service. In a, and it can also like integrate as a, a micro uh, microservices or like reactive service and uh, event routing. But there are a lot of like other uh, use cases not listed, but these are like kind of a typical use case of the things for the functions we designed or implemented the community uh, implement and design for. And so uh, what's the API looks like for Pulsar functions? Um, Basically, what you need to do is like implement uh, a process or apply method for a function. And in this uh, here, we can see that uh, for this is the uh, Java API. Basically, you implement the uh, functions uh, providing the input and output type, and then you implement the the process logic of this function. Here, it's like we append the explanation um, mark at the end of the input and then return that. 
and the belonging to are uh, here. This is the uh, uh, GoLang uh, implementation or API, and this is the uh, Python one. So for this simple uh, parser functions, uh, what it looks like for uh, data going through these functions, like if you have a hello message sending into these parser functions, and then you will get hello with a question mark uh, uh, append. So for the API, that's it. So you just need one method called process or handle to process the input and then return the output. Um, so in terms of the uh, semantics we have for parser functions, um, <clears throat> this is a, I know this is a, a field like uh, the streaming engine talked a lot about. So we have like uh, at most ones, uh, which is uh, the data will be uh, processed at the best effort. So usually like messages act to pulsar once it's received. And we have like support for at least once. So the message is act to pulsar until like the function like until the function like uh, returns and completes the processing of this message. Uh, and also uh, we have effective ones uh, available, which utilizes pulsars uh, underlying effective ones, effective ones uh, semantics. So the default behavior is for pulsar functions is um, at least once. So I think uh, due to like many people, they don't want to like lose any data. So that's the default behavior. And also pulsar is developing some uh, transaction support. Uh, on the way. So we think that once the transaction support for POSA is uh, available, then our functions can also um, accomplish the e exactly one semantics. Um, also POSA functions, for POSA functions, you can uh, uh, handle with some uh, state. The state support or management uh, is built in already. So we provide a context object for users to access the state. Uh, and those states are stored in, in Workkeeper. Um, and also the state can support like server-side operations like counters. So here is another like classic um, uh, word count exa function example. So instead of like uh, only like has the input and output. We also have additional uh, context object here. And the context object can be used to like incur the counter of each word. And then the state is you know, automatically uh, saved and managed by the BOSA framework itself. Mm. So, and also a very powerful uh, uh, client tools with uh, BOSA uh, functions. You can basically, you can like create, delete, um, update or like manage all the state of the uh, status of lifecycle of your functions, as well as like some state management uh, tools. Um, so a summary is like for POSA functions, it can improve the develop productivity in terms of like, it provides a very intuitive uh, API. Basically it's a function with apply, takes an input and generates an output. And also it supports like multiple language uh, uh, at this time. We have like Java support, we have Python and Golang support. So basically people uh, can compose their processing logic in either the language you prefer and then you can just uh, submit and run it in the POSA system. And also the POSA functions providing uh, the operational simplicity, reducing the maintenance cost. So it's fully integrated with POSA and there is no extra system or service setup needed. So you, unlike a, a traditional like full power uh, data processing engine, you need to set up a separate clusters like and then launch the frameworks or launch the service there and then submit a job. You can just, uh, we reuse the most of the uh, POSAS uh, infrastructure and you can just, what, as long as you have a POSA cluster already running, you can compose some uh, functions and then submit functions to that existing uh, cluster. And also it's kind of very easy to do some troubleshooting. Like we providing, as you can see in the uh, previous slides, we're providing a local run CLI, which basically you can uh, run, run the functions uh, locally. And also as the, uh, the graph shows, like you, we have some uh, log topics. So you basically, you can know what happens inside the functions and you can even trigger providing some like uh, special values and trigger that functions with the CRI tools. 
Uh, okay, so I think these are the like the in, in introductions, a general introduction about uh, parser functions. So next thing we are going to discuss about uh, is uh, called a uh, function mesh. So what is a function mesh? Uh, based on like uh, based on the parser functions, like as as the parser functions like growing uh, mature, more and more mature, people more and more people are using that. We found that people some use cases of people will like uh, organize a set collection of functions together to cl collaborate and uh, processing the input at a uh, stage by stage um, uh, pattern and then like finally like uh, uh, reach um, uh, generated the final result so so i think that's the kind of the abstraction or kind of the ideas we have is like uh, function mesh is, is a collection of functions uh, collaborated together to accomplish a final data processing goal and with clearly defined stages. And um, it's uh, very much like a microservice or service meshes, but uh, like with the emphasis on processing. And also, again, like I want to mention that function mesh is not a full power streaming engines uh, like Flink and, um, uh, and uh, Storm uh, because the API it providing is just a very simple. Uh, each function, each processing unit is a function basically. So you or you will have a apply method available, and it's organizing those like each unit functions together to providing a, a global view. So uh, this is something we have. Like uh, these are the in some like production systems we have like. A, 66 parser functions and then somehow they connected uh, together like by manually by user and they um, these six they combine together they accomplish one like a uh, single uh, target um, so uh, in in the current settings for for manage or launch such kind of a uh, function mesh what we have is like you have to create them like one uh one by one and uh individually so it's kind of a uh, very long, redundant to man manage them and some of the problems during this uh, these functions running is like it's really hard to track as an integrity so there's no uh automatically like uh, aggregated view and there's no like uh, linkings among them so it's uh, also really difficult to know the upstream and downstreams about uh, functions, um, things, everything is like uh, uh, set, separated and you have to somehow find a way to lock them, uh, connect them together. So the thing we want to uh, implement or the concept uh, we want to uh, provide here is like we have um, some uh, entity or some uh, uh, some like uh, some concrete types called function mesh and under its hood, and uh, there are like units like fun function parser one and parser functions one to six to collaborate together to work this uh, to accomplish some uh, goal. So, so, um, so we kind of uh, initially like we kind of uh, put up a, a, a BIP uh, a parser improvement proposal say we want something called uh, parser function, uh, function meshes and uh, with, a YAML, uh, with a YAML definition file to allow people to, um, to allow people to organize the functions uh, together and, uh, and which is, and manage them as a unit. And also we can uh, check status and uh, uh, some other like lifecycle management stuffs and that's the thing we have at during that time, and the, the and the, in order to utilize uh, maximum, uh, utilize the what we have right now in the uh, functions scheduling system, uh, what we did is like we and the extra like mesh and point in the brokers and point, and then we uh, on top of or uh, in front of the uh, function and point, we added some mesh topic. And which will, uh, which will like automatically uh, get scheduling and uh, and the launching like individual function units into the function endpoint, 
and then like they will be started uh, accordingly. And with this endpoint, you can use the management tools to um, management management tools to uh, create a uh, stop and uh, with some other tasks about the uh, meshes. And another thing we found very interesting is like uh, we uh, during our development of the cloud product, we found that some uh, Kubernetes is actually another like alternative of things available for us to utilize to implement function meshes. So basically, uh, instead of like we uh, talk to uh, the Pulsar cluster directly, now we can talk to the uh, Kubernetes API server uh, directly uh, with some uh, CRD implementation. So as you can see, we can like uh, uh, submit a function mesh uh, in, the, in the Kubernetes uh, CRD format within, within that YAML file. And then like what hap um, and then what happens is like the Kubernetes uh, scheduler will like launch pod individually and uh, organize scheduling and uh, load balancing them together. Um, so in order to uh, accomplish this, we implement some kind of our custom types. Uh, the basic one is called our function and it requires some kind of specific, uh, some, this kind of field, uh, leave this field to uh, provide it by user you know, to start the function. And also some uh, type called mesh, which is um, aggregation of the uh, functions, a list of functions or things or sources. For things and source, uh, I think if you are, uh, if uh, you already is a parser function users, you will know that a source is like you, uh, fetching some data from external systems and then pump them, uh, push them into uh, the Pulsar topics. And sync is like you uh, reading those topics from uh, Pulsar and then like push those data up to outside the external systems. So under, under the hood, uh, underlying, they're all like uh, uh, application functions. So we, for the simplicity, we uh, here we providing all, all of those kind of uh, support so now with this function mesh uh, CRD, you, act, you can actually like submit, define your uh, function meshes, organize the function unit together, and then submit to Kubernetes. So here is a kind of a scheduling, a scheduling uh, process. They say users provide each, uh, each like individual CRD definitions via a uh, Kube control. And then the, once the, once your Kubernetes cluster receive this uh, CRD, CRD uh, request, you will like schedule individual pods uh, running the functions you desire uh, as a stateful set. <laughs> and then like this uh, launched uh, function pod will talk to the destination pods service directly to fetch and uh, to send and read data uh, to, uh, to accomplish the goals. Uh, so we, just uh, then uh, we discussed about like two, two possible like implementations of the function mesh. So uh, currently we are actually like, uh, uh, because of the uh, following reasons. Um, the first one is um, it's like we can utilize the full power of uh, Kubernetes scheduling, um, which includes like uh, uh, rebalancing, rescheduling and for tolerance and uh, and those kind of uh, very, uh, I think we, it's very crucial for a uh, production <laughs> setup uh, for fun for functions. And also now, like instead of um, uh, let the Pulsar uh, process launch the functions, current now the Pulsar itself is a first class citizen in the cloud environment. Um, this is kind of a, a ideal thing uh, because. Uh, we know we all know that the cloud movement is going on, and we we will expect like more and more things will be available in the cloud environment. And if we can run Pulsar functions as a first class citizen in, in the cloud environment, it opens a lot of like uh, possibilities, and it opens a potential talking to different uh, messaging systems. That's uh, only one, and we can integrate. Uh, actually, we can integrate a lot of like tools already available in the cloud environment to further like uh, uh, debug and uh, look into the uh, functions. Um, so demo, uh, I prepared some kind of uh, a video to just let you have a 
a sense or a feel about like how these uh, fun uh, uh, function meshes will be work. So let's see uh, what will uh, what will looks like. So this is um, a cluster. I already set up some testing um, uh, Pulsar cluster environment. So uh, uh, okay. So here is the controller. So we are basically we are starting those CRD uh, controllers, like responding to uh, functions sync uh, function meshes. So here is a function uh, example. So you can see like we define some kind of uh, field, uh, like especially the source sync and the and some input and output format. And then once you apply to the uh, Kubernetes. Uh, you will be directly available, or viewable inside <coughs> inside this um, cloud provider uh, website. You can see there are three instances of three pods running. Okay, this is the command line output, and uh, now we will like SSH into that cluster and uh, trying to consume and uh, uh, produce some messages into the topics this function is. Uh, looking at and then see how the functions would process that and generate the result into some kind of a result topic. Okay. Okay. I kind of like prepared the command uh, in advance, but there are some kind of mistakes you will see. So uh, for this one, it's actually like setting up the consumer. So we are like, now this is a, a, a we, we launch a consumer with a subscription to listening on to the uh, results topic or sync topic we use here. And now we're trying to produce the hello Apache uh, message into the, into the topic. Okay, so one message successfully produced. And here uh, you will see like uh, we have, uh, content is hello Apache question, uh, explanation mark. And uh, the this uh, thing is coming from the, uh, it's coming from this uh, source topic one, which is the, uh, which is the functions uh, listening, uh, looking at. And now uh, we are looking at a function, a simple function mesh, which is like we connected two, uh, <coughs> two explanation functions together and uh, listening on the uh, source topic, then produce the first uh, result into the uh, mid topic. And then like the second function will read the input from the mid topic and generate the result into uh, the sync topic. So here uh, it's because uh, the cloud environment has not uh, enough like uh, uh, nodes. So it takes some time to take some time to wait for the platform to schedule new nodes and and then schedule the pod. So I might um, just to do a fast forward here. Yeah, yeah, it's like the pods are pending because they're waiting for the resources. Okay, um, where are we? Oh, sorry, not this one. This one. Um, yeah, I think, so again, we're setting up some kind of a consume, uh, sorry, not consumers, but producers, I would say, yeah. So now first uh, Hello Apache, then uh, October, I guess. All right, the message uh, is produced. And this output is actually from the function that we previously running, right? So the function will attach one uh, exclamation mark. So here, like, 
so again, like I waited some time for the for the second functions part to be like fully functioning. Um, so I think the scheduling is kind of uh, slow. Um, I might fast forward a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think they are long running now. And now you can um, okay. still okay. just take some time to. <laughs> somehow to launch the function. So the code start time of our function is kind of, uh, it takes some time. So I don't like uh, this, but yeah. Okay, now we are checking, actually checking the uh, functions lock. So here we are seeing like it's creating consumers for a topic, for the middle topic, which is intermediate uh, result published at. And um, subscribe to yeah, I think uh, we are almost done. So yeah, here. Ooh. So we have like both the Hello Apache question, explanation, explanation and, and the Hello October. So you can see that um, the function and the function mesh are actually like uh, consuming same output and generating like different outputs uh, here. So uh, that's kind of a very like quick and uh, intuitive uh, Few of what the uh, function mesh and functions inside communities uh, looks like, and uh, the next thing I want to show you guys is about the connectors. So, um, so basically, what we did is like we uh, <laughs> uh, we already set up some MongoDB database inside the cloud environment, and uh, this what this source is trying to do is actually. Um, uh, listening on to the MongoDB uh, and see if there's any updates event happens to that uh, uh, to that uh, I will say to that uh, database. If something happened, there will be an automatic message pushed into the uh, POSA system. So <laughs> we are using the uh, POSA connectors uh, called DBCM of the MongoDB source. Uh, so we launched it. <laughs> into community director again. <laughs> and you will, uh, sorry, just a refresh. And you will see the soft sample uh, here, which is um, one instance or one pod. And again, this one we are setting up some kind of uh, listening uh, consumer uh, process. Okay, and for this one, I think we are uh, logging into the uh, MongoDB instance and uh, uh, you using the MongoDB uh, command line to Mongo command line tools to to make some update to the system. So this is a command to log in, log in to the <coughs> MongoDB. And this is the one we, oh, uh, so we we are setting up a subscription or listening on to the, this uh, very uh, special uh, topic called dbserver1.inventory.products. So dbserver1, if you notice, is the database name we used provided to the source uh, config. An inventory, actually the database we are having inside the MongoDB and the products is just a table. So we subtract to that topic inside POSA. Okay. Um, and we checked if the, uh, if the, the source is ready, source function is ready. Okay, since it's already running and listening. So yeah, I will copy some command. Okay. So, uh, oh, oops. Okay. 
basically we are inside the inventory database we are updating the products table with some kind of um, um, setting some kind of value from 1.25 to 12.5 so if you so if you look at the uh, the expression we can see a, a like very detailed a, like update notification was sent to the pulsar like the new value is 12.5 and the connect is mongodb the name the database name and some kind of uh, the db name and the replica set and collections of the table is products at some time timestamp yeah okay okay yeah i think hopefully that this one will also help you uh, get some uh, sense or ideas of of how the cognitive functions and the function meshes will be working together and the one thing i haven't shown yet is like uh, we can actually connect the source uh, and the functions and the things together so that you can construct a uh, pipeline which is reading some kind of input from the external system uh, in filling that into the pulsar uh, cluster and then like the, some uh, function unit inside your pulsar cluster can uh, read and uh, pre-process uh, those kind of input and then even like sending out sending out the result to some other another talk or that you can even like send out that to another like uh, um, external uh, sync systems. It's kind of like ideal uh, possible for you to utilize the POSA and POSA functions to to do some data cleaning or data trans, uh, trans, transition uh, tasks. Yeah. So if, and also like if you want, uh, if you're able to like compose like complex uh, mesh, meshes together uh, with multiple like function units you can actually like do some like microservice tasks and uh, uh, accomplish uh, very like complex things with these kind of uh, api okay uh, so it's a uh, the future planning so uh, we are thinking about like providing more cloud uh, native support currently uh, it's <laughs> just at a demo stage so there are lots of like um, um, uh, issues or refinements can be done in order to make it fully integrated with cloud native support and also like we want to and uh, this is maybe a task for pulsa community is like we want to provide a self-contained function runtime so currently we uh the demo i showed you guys is just borrowing the uh, function runtime directly from uh pulsa uh function project um but actually i i found that something uh, something can be improved so that uh, the runtime is self-contained and it can be run anywhere in other environments and with different uh, schedulers. So also, uh, we want to have something called function registry for reusing function units. So once we open the open the gates of the function mesh, and people can actually will be able to like uh, uh, reuse many of the uh, commonly used uh, functions like some transformation some filtering those kind of stuff so instead of like like users implement them again and again so we want to provide some kind of a place for people to just a reference and utilize those kind of uh, uh, well-defined uh, function unit <laughs> and also um, the next task is like we are looking at uh, uh, how can how can function mesh be easily management managed and inspected with some front end uh, page and also some beta tools so that it will be like more intuitive and in the just the demo video we see that we rely on the uh, cloud providers um, UI to see like how the each of the functions is working on but hopefully like we can develop some better or more like customized tools to accomplish um, to accomplish more things and also these are some kind of um, the last two are kind of some kind of the uh, execution uh, optimization. Basically, like we uh, in the current implementation, like each function they just like read from one topic and send uh, report to another topic. So hopefully, like somehow we can find some uh, a strategy to group some functions together so that they can co run in, uh, in one in one part and uh, in one process if in the process uh, context so that there's no like shuffling and uh, additional topics uh, needed to, 
to Im improve both the throughput and the latencies and reduce the cost. And also we might want to have enabling like auto scaling based on uh, pulsar metrics so that the, the, the panel tuning can be uh, reduced. And the least, but last but not least is like we will ha be having a pulsar simulation in this at the end, uh, in the end of November. So if you guys are interested and you want to learn more about pulsar and pulsar functions and uh, the ecosystems and the use cases, you can just uh, use this link to 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 submit some kind of a presentation, uh, or, or you can just register uh, for listening. Okay, well, thank you. I think that's all I uh, can share with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this talk. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, Nang. Uh, and I think there are some of the questions that I'm not sure if you want to take uh, some of the questions in the chat. Okay. I think the question is mainly around, uh, the first question is a uh, function match like a chain of operations that's being accomplished by each function that is called uh, function match. Uh, yeah, uh, to, some, uh, to some degree or to some extent, uh, yes, that's the thing we want to uh, do, but the, uh, we are not provi uh, providing actually a new or more powerful uh, computing tools. We're just sort of trying to reuse the function we have uh, already in the pulsar and providing a much uh, easier to manage uh, uh, or, a, or a, a abstraction or integrated uh, abstraction to to for users to view at. So that's yeah the 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 kind of a in simple word the channel of, uh, operational channel of functions is right. Yeah. Okay. So another one is is pulsar an alternative to Flink? Uh, how about Nifi? Uh, so I think. Uh, Pulsar itself is not an alternative of Flink. The Flink is a full power streaming processing engines, but for Pulsar, it's more focused on the uh, messaging part. So you can uh, send out and um, subscribe uh, messages as a <laughs> as a middleware. Uh, but we are also like extending some kind of uh, uh, computing power. Uh, computing capabilities of the Pulsar like Pulsar functions. So you can do some like simple tasks directly inside Pulsar. And then we are also integrating with, uh, actually we have a good integration with like Flinks. So you can utilize your Flink uh, to subscribe from, uh, to uh, fetch input from uh, from Pulsar and then do the do the processing. Uh, uh, how about Nifi? So I think CJ, maybe you have some better answer. Okay, I think uh, we are kind of running out of time uh, now. Oh, okay. If you have any uh, kind of questions, I think uh, you can find uh, Neng or me uh, in the Slack channel. And I think Devin also uh, is going to have a talk about the uh, possible Spring later today. You can also join uh, Devin's session. And the next session in Pulsar Track would be uh, start in a couple of minutes and uh, it's a different link. So. If you click the session, you can uh, join uh, the next session. Thank, uh, thank, okay. thank you, Neng. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sje, and uh, thank you, guys. And I hope you can uh, hope you guys can listen to uh, Devin's talk. Okay. Okay. See you, guys. See you. Bye bye.